All right, hello everyone. I know it's been a long time since I've done a Tennille Teaches, but I just recently had a request from one of my friends, Captain Morwen, on Twitter to do a quick tutorial on coloring in Toon Boom. So I figured I would do that really quick, uh, especially since I know I have an old tutorial on coloring and that one's kind of dated as compared to what I do now. And she specifically wanted to know what my process is now for coloring. Uh, so what I have here is a little animation I have of a cat running and I can play that for you guys and this is after you know it's all been colored and line arted and you know it's all ready to go so I'm gonna kind of take you through the process of how I did this one um, so first what we have to do is go back to what it looked like before it looked all nice so let's double click this layer which I've named run and that's where the entire animation is sitting uh, it is just all on this one run layer. Uh, I am going to check out of read line art and turn on read underlay. These options let you hide or show layers from a certain layer. Uh, this is the one confusing thing about Toon Boom. Ugh, I say one confusing thing. There are many confusing things about Toon Booms. Uh, there are layers, which are these. I can create a new layer, you know, a new drawing layer here by clicking this plus button. But I can also, within a layer, use sublayers. And I don't know if they're actually called sublayers, but for the purpose of this video, I am going to call them sublayers. We have overlay art. Uh, line art, color art, and underlay art. And on the camera here, if you see my camera tab right here, that lets us know that we're looking at the camera view. This camera view is what, if you would render, what would show up on that video. In camera view, I see my underlay right here. It doesn't matter which of these I'm clicked on, it is only going to show what boxes you have checked in your vector options. So you can double click any of these to get to your layer properties and if I want the if I want both of them to show I'll have all my boxes checked. If I just want one to show I can check off of that box or I can check off of that box and now the underlay doesn't show. Now if you do want to see those layers while you're working on your animation um, but don't want it in your camera view, that's why you have, that's when you can go over here to your drawing tab. Now in the drawing tab, I can see the line art layer. And that's because I am on that line art sub layer. If I click over here to the underlay art, I'm going to only see my sketches. So I can switch between those in the drawing tab to look at and work on these frames. But then when I go over to the camera, I only see the ones that I have checked in here. But the drawing layer does not care about those checkboxes. It'll show you everything. But you may be asking, Tennille, what if I want to see both my underlay and my line art layer while I'm working in the drawing tab? Lucky for you, Toon Boom has an option for that. If you go over here to the preview, line, and color art, you can click on it. And my stuff hasn't shown up. Huh, that's strange. Click and hold, and you can have it check marked either overlay or underlay. I want to see my underlay artwork, so I click on that, and there we go. Now I can see, you can see those blue lines. That is where my underlay is. So you're ready to go to coloring. I am going to take a few seconds here to uncolor everything that I've done here uh, just to show you how I colored. But I'm not going to go over the line art because line art is, you know, everybody can do their own line art and I think that's fairly self-explanatory. If you want me to go over that, I can uh, in a different video. You know what, we, we'll just take the, uh, ah, uh, well, no, I, I do want to show you guys, uh, more of this. 
So I'll make sure to get rid of, of quite a few, quite, quite a bit of this so that I can actually show you some stuff. Okay, and also if you're wondering what tool I'm using, if you click and hold on the paint bucket tool, it gives you a whole bunch of different options here. You can just use a plain paint bucket, paint. There's ink, which I've not really tested out before. Um, if this does something cool, tell me, I'll check it out. Uh, paint unpainted, repaint, and unpaint. And I'll I'll show you what uh, at least the paint, paint unpainted, repaint, and unpaint can do. Right now I'm using unpaint, and with unpaint I can just click on the spot that I don't want to be painted anymore, and that will get rid of anything that I have painted there. Um, and you can, for a quick shortcut for switching frames, you can press F and G to go either forward or backward. G goes forward, F goes backward. Just a nice little trick there. Okay. Let's unpaint. A few more things here. Like I said, I'm not going to unpaint all of this. Just enough to show you guys uh, the basics of what these paint buckets can do. Okay. So now we've unpainted quite a bit. Uh, it's important when coloring to make sure you have the colors you want picked out right away. I literally, I imported a picture that's a reference of this character and I uh, color picked like all the colors that I wanted exactly. So I knew exactly what I wanted for these colors. But if you don't know, or if you don't have your uh, colors picked yet, just um, let's let's say that I uh, that I didn't. Whoops, I'm hitting the wrong buttons. No, not that. Gosh, diddly dang it. Okay, there we go. Alright, these are the base colors that Toon Boom will start you out with. I tend to delete most of these and just keep like black and then a sketchy blue to start with. And uh, that's how I start my animations. So I would get rid of all of this, just delete. And I'd keep black and I'd also just go in here and I'd make a blue. And that's how I'd start sketching. Uh, but then once I start adding, you know, characters and color palettes, then I would go in, if you can, if you hit this button here that says hide palette list view, there we go, uh, then we can switch over here and this has all of my color palette for just this character, which is very handy. Uh, if you have an animation with multiple characters and multiple color palettes going on, I highly recommend uh, using the scene palettes and making new palettes. Make sure you name it. Naming your palette so you don't get confused. And now I have a completely new palette that I can separate different characters in, and that just means that I don't get a whole huge amount of colors you know, because it's like after so many colors, like this just gets confusing to look at, and no one wants to look at like a big angry palette like this. That just gets really unorganized and is not fun to look at. Uh, but anyway, you can pick your colors in here. This is all pretty basic stuff, you know. You can just add new colors. If you want a color that's similar, like I have this green here, if you want a similar color, while I'm clicked on it, I can push the plus button and it'll make an exact copy of that color. And now let's say I just want to like, whoop, I just wanted to edit that color just a little bit. So it's like this kind of green as opposed to like just bright emerald green. Uh, you can do that, which is really handy. Toon Boom's great because you can also like I could paint her this green color and then um and then let's say like later on uh, down the line in the animation I don't like that green color instead of having to repaint her every single frame um, to the color you want you can instead just double click on this color and say okay I didn't like this color let's let's make her purple instead and you can switch it and it will switch every instance of that color that you've used 
that can be a blessing and a curse. You want to make sure that you are careful, you know, don't change, um, like if I had two characters here and I wanted to change her base color to purple, but there was another character I painted using the green and I wanted that to stay green, I would be changing both of them to purple. So it might be a good idea to keep anything that is different at all. Uh, even if they're used as, even if you think they're going to use the same color, use different palettes for them. That way, if you do end up changing the colors at all, you don't uh, create a headache for yourself by making sure that you have to like repaint things. I've run into that problem sometimes where I think I want a character like two char different characters' noses to be the same like shade of pink, and then I decide later that I want it to be a different shade, and then I've just created a headache for myself because now I need to repaint one character's nose all to the one color and the others to the other. Uh, anyway, this is a lot of colors. And especially if you know that a palette is going to have a lot of colors, I highly suggest not leaving the default names here and actually naming them to to something yet again just being organized helps a lot uh, I tend to forget to name things but here we go these are all actually named so that is nice so on to actually coloring we've switched back to the normal paint tool I've got my base color here to paint her black and you know that's that's a pretty basic tool you just click and paint but let's say that in the in this uh, sketch let's say that all my lines aren't closed let's oof that that's a big hole we don't want a hole quite that big um, let's say that there's just like the tiniest gap in my line art. Well, that gap causes a big problem because now I want to paint and the darn thing won't paint. And now I've got to go back and manually like fill in the line art and ah, that's such a bother. But actually, if you go over here to tool properties, Tool properties will change depending on what kind of tool you have here in your toolbar. So uh, if you don't see mine here, make sure that you're clicked on the paint bucket tool. Uh, click on the paint bucket tool and paint bucket tool has this nice little option here that says no close gap. If I click on it and I'm guessing that's going to be a medium sized gap. So we're going to say close medium sized gap and I click paint. No, it still won't do it. How about large? Large paint gap. I, I think my hole's too big. Okay. Come on, tiny, tiny hole. Okay, there we go. That's a nice tiny hole. Okay. There we go. And I said paint, oh, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. close small gap. So I was still able to paint this time, even though there was a hole in my line art. That's great, that just saves you time, so you don't have to go back into the line art and fix a problem that, you know, like no one's going to see that that tiny gap in the line art um, in, a, in a final animation. So that's really handy. Uh, the only problem I found in Toon Boom with the close small gap is that when you switch over to something like Paint Unpainted, which is a tool I'll be showing you here in a little bit, it tends to not, okay, it actually did this time. It tends to not close gaps as well. So I've had to like switch over to uh, the Paint Bucket tool and use that instead. So let's go ahead and, and paint the base uh, stuff. Now, I can go into all of these manually and paint them, as you see that I did, as you just saw that I did. Uh, another great thing that Toon Boom can do is, yet again, over here in Tool Properties with the Paint Bucket tool, you can click on this setting here that says Apply to Multiple Drawings. 
It also has another uh, setting here that says apply to visible drawings, and I think that means everything, like all of your layers down here, it would apply to all of them. But we don't want that for this time, although that is a cool tool you can use. We instead of just want this, the multiply to multiple drawings. Click on it, and click on a spot in your drawing where, like, fix on, fixate on, like, this point of her shoulder blade. In each of these drawings, that will be painted the black color. So by clicking this tool, I can click right here. And now if I move forward, all of these empty spots that, that didn't weren't painted before have now been painted in. And this is a great tool to use if you're doing really subtle animation. Uh, I'm lucky that in this run cycle I had a spot that that I could paint that would paint all of them forward. But that's a great tool to use to get a lot of coloring done fast. Now obviously if I tried painting out here on one of these limbs uh, that's moving around a lot, that could cause some real problems. Like, let's go ahead and just try that. Let's try painting in this foot. Uh, whoop, actually, every time you use uh, this tool, the multiply to apply to multiple drawings button, um, each time you use it, it will deselect afterwards. So if you wanted to use it again, you have to click it again. That's important to know. So let me try filling in this paw here. This blue color. Uh, okay, there actually was no other spot here where that was. Uh, where the drawings could have been filled in there. So that actually worked out just fine. Still not very effective, I could have just painted it. Let's try, let's try somewhere else. Where, where's another spot? Okay, here we go. Let's try filling in this blue. Okay, now we see it's, it's fine there. It's fine there. Oh, but now my whole cat is blue and I did not want that and my whole cat is blue and I definitely did not want that. So see, you gotta use it uh, where you think it's gonna be most useful, where, where limbs aren't flying around and that kind of thing. Yet again, very nice and subtle animation, but um, when the body is moving in extreme poses like this, not great. Uh, so another tool that is great, and we're just gonna... We're going to fill her in again so that she, yeah, is mostly colored correctly. And let's let's fill in these patches that uh, should be filled in this golden color. Well, I could go in and paint each individual patch and they move on to the next layer because they're all moving around. So I can't use the paint forward and do each individual patch and that'll take a while or thanks to Toon Boom I can click and hold on this and go to the paint unpainted tool with the paint unpainted tool what I can do instead is just click drag and boom and now this will paint anything that I have not yet painted this is great if you know like in this animation I have a bunch of little spots that need to be painted so, you know, let's say I was not done with this at all, and I had all these little spots that still needed to be painted. Instead of painting each one individually, I can just click and drag over my whole image and boom, there we go, it's done. Now another nice tool here is the repaint option with the paint bucket tool. Uh, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Let's say I just wanted this all to be a silhouette or you know, I wanted something to be a different color. I could just take this whole thing, uh, drag, and boom. Now I've got one solid color. I don't tend to use the repaint paint option much, but it definitely has its uses, so I want to make sure that you guys uh, see that. Now, 
As far as not using the paint bucket, because, you know, sometimes you don't want to use the paint bucket for things, uh, the paintbrush itself has a lot of neat tools that you can use for coloring. So I paint everything on my line art layer typically. Let's say though that I, for whatever reason, did not want to paint on uh, my line art tool and I wanted the colors to uh, be on, you know, like the color sub layer. Well, a great way to do that, we're just gonna, we're gonna get rid of a lot of this. Okay. I'm gonna make her a more just basic cat for the purpose of the rest of this demonstration. Whoop, not there. Get rid of a lot of these spots. Get rid of all of this color. There we go. Okay. So now I have a clean, clean line art. Let's say I wanted the color all to be underneath the line art. What I would do is control, copy this go to the color art layer, drop it there, and now I can color in everything no, let's just paint the whole thing. Okay, now I can color it all just in this layer and the line art is on top. What could be handy about this, then, is going to your color art and grabbing your paintbrush. I could go into the tool properties for my brush, so you want to make sure that you're clicked on the brush and then go to tool properties, and I can click on, I have these, uh, these different brush options. Here's your normal brush, and your normal brush will paint, you know, just wherever. Also, if you notice the, uh, the blue line on your color layer. I'm not exactly sure why it does this. I think it's a way that you can use like you can vectorize stuff but I'm, I'm not positive. Anyway I just hit D and that gets rid of it uh, if that annoys you. So your normal brush you know uh, it'll paint wherever. Uh, you do have these two other options though. You have the draw behind brush and so you'll notice if I draw here it's going to draw behind whatever is already on your drawing tab. And uh, this, this is a great tool to use. I use it all the time, especially when I'm doing um, line art on stuff, and that's great. But this, let's say, you know, this is the redraw. So this is kind of like the draw behind, but opposite. Instead, now, it's only going to draw on what's already there. So, let's... Put some of these uh, markings back on, even though you know I don't, because <laughs> because I line arted where they're all supposed to go in my regular line art. Uh, I don't really know, so I'm just making some guesstimations at this point to to show you an example. And fill that in. Oop, oop. And like that, and let's do like that. Okay, that, that gives you a basic gist. So now if I go to my camera, I can set this up so the underlay is gone, the line art is there, and so now you have nice clean line art and you can do all your coloring underneath. So that's just kind of a, a preference thing on, on how you want to do things. Uh, you can either put it all on one line art layer or, probably more smartly uh, and make things more organized, put things on the color sub layer and, and keep everything more organized. Now of course when you're over here in the camera you can see how the final product would look. Um, if you really want to see what the final product will look, because uh, Toon Boom does not tend to show you exactly 
um, what your colors might look like or how your line looks, that's a, a big thing, is you want to, it'll naturally be an open GL view. If you go over here to render view, this shows me what the final actual frame would look like. Um, and you'll notice that the difference between this and this is that the lines have gotten a lot softer. Um, and maybe you don't want that. There is a way to fix this. Uh, double click on your layer again, and you would have to do this for each and every layer that you notice this, this softness on. Um, and in layer properties, you want to look at anti-aliasing quality, and it's on high. If I switch this over to low, you'll see that it has more of that pixelated look. This looks more like what I actually drew. Uh, so that is also just a preference thing on whether you want it to soften your lines or not. And you can obviously, you know, how high or low you want that is all dependent, all dependent on your own taste. So for one last example, let's go back to OpenGL view because uh, Toon Boom works faster if you do that. Also, uh, just as another note, if you're in render view, you cannot play your animation. It's only going to show you one frame at a time. Uh, just so you think you're aware of that. So, all right, let's do one last example. Let's say you want to shade your colored animation and you don't want to go in and like shade it all manually just from like picking colors and drawing all the shading on there because that's kind of a pain in the butt. Let's say you want to, you know, especially with a character like this where if, if I shaded, you know, I would have to pick a color that's the right color for this and I'd have to pick a color that's the right color for the black and, you know, draw lines for both of those and then color that in. That would just be a pain. You want like a multiply layer so you can shade everything. That can be done by creating a new drawing. And this all gets a little complicated, so I understand if you uh, <laughs> skip this part. But anyway, you want to be over here in your network, and you want to go over here to module library. If you don't have uh, either of these where I have them, just click on this little arrow pointing down, and you should be able to pull up both of them right here. You have the module library and the network. Uh, and go to filter and it'll show you a whole bunch of filters. We want the tone filter. So I go over here to tone and right now run is connected directly to the composite. What I want to do is I want to click on this uh, tone and drag it down into the composite and we're going to remove run from the composite and instead connect it to tone. So tone is now running, or the run layer is running through the tone and then to the composite. And the composite is your final output. Now we also want to take this new drawing, take it off the composite, and connect it to the other side of tone. So now this drawing layer is acting as the effect going on to this layer. And I will show you what I mean right here. So now if I draw on here, uh, it's not going to show up in the drawing as anything special because drawing is not rendering what's going on in the composite. The composite is just what's going on in your camera view. So keep that in mind when you are on the drawing tab. When I switch over here to camera, oh, whoops, I was not on the right layer. Make sure you are on the actual drawing layer when you do this. Uh, and if I'm on the drawing layer, I can right click and hit light table and that'll show me everything. So let's draw in here. Do, do, do. Actually, that's all going to go away. See, this is there's so many things to keep track of in Toon Boom. I need to go back over here to tool properties. The problem was that I had the repaint on, so I just want to turn the regular paintbrush back on. Um, and let's go ahead and put on a big brush so that I can do this quicker. Okay. 
So, in the drawing, it's just showing up as, like, these blotchy little lines. You know, I'm painting exactly uh, where this is. But, because this is connected to the tone, and that is connected to run, what it's actually doing is it's acting as a clipping layer. And now you can see that in uh, the camera view, that there's actually some shading there. And I can even come in here on the camera view and edit this a bit if I get on the right layer. Do, do, do. It's important to note, uh, let's say you're thinking, oh man, this color isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, it does not matter what color you use here for the tone. Uh, Toon Boom is not, does not care about these colors. I could use any of these colors. I could use just straight up black. Um, and it'll read the same. Like, let's put black there. You can see it's, like, there's no difference between the orange I was just using, the orangish yellow, and the black. And, like I said, that's because Toon Boom does not care about these colors. If you want to change the color of that, first of all, make sure you are in Render View. Because, yet again, the, uh, the OpenGL view is not showing you what is going to be rendered. So make sure you go to Render View. Let's hit D so those blue lines go away. And now you see that uh, what I just put on the character, the shading I did, is much darker than what it showed in GL View. And that is much darker than I would recommend anybody use. So don't double click on, click on Drawing. Double click on Tone. If you double click on Drawing, it's just going to open up layer properties like what you saw when I double clicked on, rent, on Run. Double click on Tone. And these layer properties are just for your shading. So now I can adjust how I want this to look. And like I said, you want to be in render view, otherwise it's not going to show you an accurate picture of what it's going to look like. You can change this so uh, it doesn't blur. You'll notice that there's a slight blurring effect that's on there. Or you can change it to blur more, depending on what you like more. I can make it blur more. So now it's a very soft shading. I can make it blur less uh, if you want a cell shaded look. I usually prefer the cell shaded look. I just think it looks cleaner. But if you want it to be super soft shading, you can do it that way as well. Uh, you can also, let's say, instead of shading, uh, let's say you're doing something where there's a lot of shadows, you can invert the map, the mat, not the map, invert the mat, and so that way you're only drawing in where the highlights would be instead of the shadows. Yet again, all just depends on what kind of animation you're doing, what you think is going to be easier. And uh, most importantly, you can come down here and click on this gray bar, and here is where you can change the color. So now I can make it, you know, I can make it more red if I want the, the shadows to be red. I could make them more blue, so the shadows are more blue. Or I could just keep them plain and gray. I can also change the alpha. Let's just take this down to 25. And now it's a much lighter shade. You can bring this up to 80 if you want a darker shade. You can also manually adjust the, the colors here if you want more red, green, or blue. I tend to just go into the, the multicolor wheel um, mode. That way I can just handpick the color I want. Uh, if I, I never understand why this is an option. If for whatever reason you want it to invert your shaded color, you can hit um, multiplicative and it'll switch it for some reason. I don't know why you want to just manually change the color, but there you go. It'll do that for you if you want to guess. Uh, so yeah, that's 
pretty much uh, what I usually do to shade and color my animations. Oh, and just remember that when you are using this um, tone drawing layer, it is a completely different layer, so you do have to uh, make sure that it matches up with your animation. Like a really simple way to shade this whole animation without having to shade each individual frame would be if I just did a very basic effect like like let's say we just want like half the body in light and the other half kind of in darkness I could do a nice little sweeping shade here I want to make sure it covers the whole body um, when it's over here and then I could soften that a bit bit more bit more tone this down to like uh, more let's go like 30 yeah tone it down to about 30 and then apply that over the all of the animation so now all my frames are shaded the same and I don't have to shade each individual frame um, so that's just some of the tools that you can use to animate and like I said you can't play your animation unfortunately in render view mode and when you go over here to uh, GL it's not going to show you an accurate representation of your shading so just keep that in mind uh, and then I can just hit the loop button, hit play, and the colors are going to go all over the place because I didn't properly recolor this. But that's okay because I just wanted to show you how to use the tools and what I typically do to uh, animate. Um, so there you have it. <laughs> uh, I hope this is helpful. If you guys have any more questions about Toon Boom or things you would like to uh, see me explain how I do in Toon Boom, I am by no means a master of this program. There's still a bunch of this stuff that I... have uh, never used or am still trying to figure out myself. Um, it's it's all just a big puzzle of just, you know, f figuring out tools and then figuring out different ways that you can use them. So I hope this has been helpful, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye!